Today we're putting the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra 16K to the test to see if all its unique features make this printer worth the upgrade. We're going to start off by getting the machine out of the box. As is the case with most resin printers, setup is exceedingly simple. In fact, I would say the most difficult part of the process is just figuring out how to efficiently remove the printer from the box itself, which from experience, I found that tilting the box on its side and just sliding the printer out is generally the best way to go. This particular printer has this very nondescript box at the bottom that actually has the drip tray in. So make sure you don't accidentally throw that out. After that, it's just removing a bunch of plastic packaging from the machine. There's a bag around the entire printer. There's the plastic wrap that's on the shroud cover. And then within the actual shroud, you have all of this foam packaging that is holding literally every other part of this printer. So in the toolbox kit, you have the normal type of things, the screws, the tools for maintenance, the power block, USB sticks, some gloves, all of that fun stuff. Next within the tower of foam, we have the build plate, which once again has that really cool laser etch design on it. Also the plastic that you need to remove move before printing anything on it. The build plate now has these nice grips on the top of it, which is an improvement over the original Saturn IV build plates that everyone complained you couldn't grab onto very well. So it's nice to see that design issue being resolved. Now within the printer itself, first thing I did was remove the lens cap from the camera. Next was onto the vat, which is being held down by these bolts for shipping. There's nothing about removing these mentioned in the user manual though, but we definitely do need to remove them at the very least to replace them with the proper screws. So I grabbed one of the hex keys from the tool package to remove those. Also removed the last piece of foam from underneath the vat and then it was on to the film that once again is not mentioned that needs to be removed but there is the film that is physically on the screen as well as the one on the bottom of the FEP sheet. But once you've got both of those off you can return the vat to the machine and then screw in the proper vat screws. All that's left to do after that is to plug in the two parts of the power cord together and then plug that into the machine itself before turning it on. The printer will start by guiding you through a fairly typical setup process. Select your language, add it to your Wi-Fi if you want to, name your device. Next, it'll run itself through some self-tests, which it actually does every time you turn on the printer. This is a fairly quick process though. After that, it will most likely prompt you to upgrade your firmware, which I would highly recommend doing. And once it's completed the update, we can start printing. Now I wanted to immediately put this 16K resolution screen to the test. So I decided on this armor statue that I had saved for a rainy day. I did start off with the base first though, just to make sure that I had all of my resin settings dialed in correctly. Something that I believe is quite unique to this machine is that it actually has a minimum resin fill line as well as a max fill line. So made sure to fill it up to that line at the very least. And then it was on to getting this part printed. I ended up remotely sending the file to this printer, which is why it's in the local file section of the machine. And once you've pressed print, the first thing this machine is going to do is warm up the resin tank. You can set the machine to preheat beforehand, but I wanted to see what it would do without that. And to go from 23 degrees Celsius to 30, it took the printer about 10 minutes. One thing that I do really like though, is while the machine is working on heating the vat up to your temperature, it makes the build plate go in and out of the resin to basically mix the resin around to make sure it's a uniform temperature throughout the whole vat. I was also very interested in trying out the time lapse for this machine, especially now that it has the LED light to illuminate the print itself. This one wasn't super exciting because it had all of the supports facing towards the camera. Now that this print is finished, we can work on removing it. First thing is you absolutely want to add the drip tray to this machine so that you don't get resin where you definitely do not want it to be. One thing this machine unfortunately doesn't have though is a drip bracket. So I printed myself one of these, which is one that works with the older version of the Saturn IV Ultra. 10 out of 10 highly recommend and this is what the base print was looking like super impressive looking even though it was still all covered in that excess resin which meant that i was very excited to start moving on to the rest of the armor another thing that i wanted to point out was that there's just like no hope in terms of accurate time estimations for this machine i'm pretty sure it's because of the whole tilt release functionality that the slicer just does not understand the settings that it has to be set at for it to work properly so uh, don't freak out if the slicer tells you something's going to take 100 hours to print because because I basically maxed out the height with this machine with those legs and this was only a just over nine hour print. And that was using like the default standard setting, not the high speed version. And again, these pieces turned out beautifully. And those two build plates worth of parts were the entirety of the armor statue. So I figured it was about time to start getting everything cleaned off. As usual, I set the timer for four minutes. I honestly don't know why I do this. It's just what I've always done and it seems to work out well. And here's what the parts were looking like fresh out of the wash station. 
super impressive looking as is, but these parts are only going to get better looking once we get all of these supports removed. Of course, using my little heat gun pen to help me remove the supports. Heat just makes these supports so much softer and easy to remove. It's so much easier to just peel them off and I find that it does leave less scarring, probably because they are just sort of falling away from the main piece. And for more delicate parts like this hammer, having the support material just sort of fall away from it is so much easier than having to fight and try to not damage the part itself. For tighter areas, I will use a thin pair of pliers or tweezers to get into those nooks and crannies. And finally, with all of those supports removed, here is what the parts were looking like. So, so impressive. Honestly, I don't think this footage is really doing these pieces justice because I could get like two inches away from these parts and not see like a single layer line and just all of the detail on these pieces was incredible. The final step for these parts was properly curing everything. And then I went ahead and actually painted this statue. The only post-processing that I did was filing down where some of the support material was. Other than that, what you see is exactly what came off of the printer. And again, the detail on this model was insane. Like you can literally see the stitching in the belt, the texture of the leather in the skirt. And it actually might be a good thing that I went ahead and painted this because I'm not sure if the camera would have picked up those super minute details otherwise. Now, clearly this printer is very capable of printing incredible detail, but I also wanted to see how it would handle smoother objects. So I filled up an entire build plate with a bunch of different credits. I know I literally am printing money. <laughs> Once again, this was a bed of really successful looking prints, got all of those cleaned and cured, and this is what some of those credits looked like close up. Some of them looked like they had minute lines, but then when I would turn it in a different direction with the light, they would disappear. So when I go to paint these, I'm not sure if any of that will even be visible or not. These are one of the few things in this video that I didn't paint yet, but overall, all of these turned out really nicely. I did pick a bunch of different types of credits. We've got the at Atten gold coins, the Republic credits, even some Imperial ones. So for quite simple prints, they did turn out really impressive looking since they are so smooth. From there, I wanted to jump back to something more detailed, but also larger. So this is a life-size Wiccan crown. So a full life-size prop that involved an insane amount of support to get to print properly. Again, this looked like it turned out beautifully, but I wanted to really see what it looked like once all of the resin and support material was removed. I have to say, this was one of the more nerve-wracking pieces that I've ever had to remove supports from. I did mix in some more flexible resin so that I didn't end up just shattering it when I went to try and remove all of this stuff, so that was a good plan, but still with the heat, it was making the crown quite flexible, and then once all the like support structure was gone, it was like very bendy, and I was concerned that I was just gonna sort of like flop and break, which thankfully it did not, and it ended up turning out really, really beautifully. It has that very interesting combination of being insanely detailed with all of the cutout sections, but it is a smooth piece, one that I've also already painted. Seeing how this machine was handling all of these prints made me cave in and finally decide to tackle Rio Vidal's dagger. This thing has been my Roman Empire, as the kids say these days, and it is an insanely detailed prop. One I had to muster up my last two 3D modeling brain cells for, because no one was crazy enough to tackle this design project, and I absolutely do not blame them after doing this myself. There are a few things more satisfying than modeling something yourself, and then having that finished object physically within your hands days or even hours later. And once again, this machine produced paint-ready props straight off of the printer. The last thing was more of a fun project. We have a bust of the legend himself, Neil. This was the only print that had a bit of an issue, and I'd say it's more on me than the machine. It looks like there was a bit too much suction force, and it caused it to split on the arm a little, which is really unfortunate because this print turned out so amazing other than that one little section. I thought it was important to include though to showcase that even with a lot of experience, not every single print is going to turn out perfectly. As always, I wanted to wrap this video up by giving you my final thoughts about this 3D printer now that I've had the opportunity to put it through its paces over the last couple of weeks. Overall, it's been an incredibly positive experience with the Saturn IV Ultra 16K, which is an absolute mouthful of a printer name. The only issue I ever encountered has since been completely resolved with a firmware update. I had it freeze mid-print a couple of times, so I contacted Elegoo and they sent over a firmware update that is in the works, and since that update, it hasn't happened again. So unfortunately, 
that it happened at all, but that update did completely resolve the issue and ultimately that's what matters. And I'm sure that that firmware update will be one that is publicly available by the time that this printer comes out, so no one is going to end up encountering that freezing problem. As you can somewhat see behind me, I have the various prints that I use this machine for and a few of them are actually already painted and that is one of the things that I absolutely love about resin printers. They end up being like paint ready straight off of the machine. A couple of the pieces got filed down where support material was, but really the only part that got any sort of sanding was this dagger blade, only because it tapers and so you could see a little bit of stepping. I knew I was going to have to do that super realistic metal painting effect on it and that will make even the smallest of imperfections on a print job show up. So the fact that it was like not even a five minute sanding job for that blade to be paint ready was incredible and I did nothing to the handle. It turned out absolutely beautifully. It captured all of that detail perfectly and yeah this is probably one of my new favorite prop builds now. Because of the 16k resolution screen that this printer has it does really make it an excellent all-around resin printer. Unfortunately a lot of the time when you start looking at those bigger machines you technically start decreasing the pixel density. You know when you can get a screen like this big that is 9k and then a screen this big that is also 9k then the pixel density is less and so that is when you start sacrificing some of those details on smaller models and if you are someone that does quite a variety of different types of projects you're doing tabletop miniatures as well as larger prop builds finding a resin printer that can cater towards both of those types of projects can be more difficult but I think the Saturn IV Ultra does actually succeed in a lot of those areas you end up getting that larger build plate and build volume so all of a sudden you can fit so many larger pieces on it or just a batch print even more parts but you're not really having to sacrifice any of that print resolution because of that 16k screen. This printer is also just incredibly easy to use. I'm not entirely sure what the general consensus is about the tilt release technology. I am personally a pretty big fan of it. I think it works really well. The tilt release also makes printing very fast. I nearly maxed out the build volume height with those armor or statue legs and I believe that print job took just over nine hours and that was a pretty tall print so nine hours for that was very impressive. The one thing that it absolutely improves upon is ease of print settings. On the more traditional resin printers that pull the bed just up and down you do have to worry about the lift speed and distance and just a lot more settings than you do with this one. I mean technically I'm sure you can change it but for the most part you can leave it as is and then on the machine itself there are speed settings whether you want it to run at standard, high speed. Yeah, it's really nice to have more settings to not have to worry about whether you are just starting out resin printing and have no clue what any of those settings even mean or even for me with years of resin printing experience at this point. It was very nice to only have to worry about two settings which were just the layer and bottom layer exposure times. And honestly the only reason I even messed with those was because of the heated vat that this printer has. At this point I basically figured out the exposure settings for all of my different resins so I tend to not mess with them but because this printer is keeping your resin at like the most optimal temperature uh, warm resin prints a lot easier. I just decreased my layer exposure time by a couple of milliseconds. It's not that it was really doing anything crazy to the prints themselves I just found that the support material was maybe a little too strong and well attached to the print. Depending on the temperatures that you're used to working with your resin in then you might need to decrease those exposure times further than a couple of milliseconds. You know my workshop typically is like 20 22 to 25 degrees Celsius so it's really not a massive jump from that to the 30 degrees that this printer was keeping my resin at. But if your typical printing environment is even colder than that then you will possibly need to decrease those exposure times even further if you've been somewhat compensating for the colder resin. But even though my workshop tends to be in fairly optimal temperature conditions I am still a massive fan of the heated vat feature. Warmer resin prints a lot easier there's less likely of a chance for print failure and in the summer it does get colder down here with the air conditioning. It's nice to know that regardless of what time of year it is and what the temperature is like down here that this machine is going to be keeping my resin at the absolute perfect temperature. The only slight downside with the heated vat is it does take a reasonable amount of time to heat up to those temperatures. Again it was really only having to go from like 22 degrees celsius to 30 so not a humongous temperature jump. I would say it took somewhere between 5 to 10 minutes. That build plate is also another massive positive thanks to it being that self-leveling type. Just another one of those things that you don't end up having to worry about and that really make this printer plug and play. I think it took me like in total maybe 20 minutes to get it out of the box even 
even with filming, like you saw the beginning of this video, this was like not a difficult process at all. If I wasn't worried about filming the process, I probably could have had this thing out of the box and ready to roll in like 10 minutes. I do also really like how on the build plate, Elegoo added those top gripping bracket things. I know that's something with the Mars 5 and the older Saturn 4s that was of concern when it was just that smooth, like rounded shape, it did make it a lot more difficult to grip onto. So it is nice to see Elegoo fixing some of those design issues. Same thing goes for the light that is now included within the shroud above the camera. It means that you always have optimal lighting if you are somebody that likes making resin time lapses or want to monitor your printer remotely. As far as I know though, you can only monitor it from a computer. So it isn't the same thing as like checking in on an FDM printer like I'm sure a lot of us do with our phones. I'm not sure if that's something that's going to change in the future perhaps. So yeah, a lot of great well thought out design features for the Saturn IV Ultra. The only thing that I feel like is missing is a drip bracket, which you know is my general complaint amongst all resin printers. I always just wish that more machines had those built-in drip brackets either on the printer or on the physical build plate itself. It's just such a necessary thing for me. So when machines just don't have it, it irks me. But yeah, it's just one of those things that I'm going to keep mentioning in every single resin printer review until companies start putting drip brackets on their machines. I'm pretty sure I exclusively ended up remotely sending all of my print jobs to this machine. I just never seem to be in the same room as my printers when I'm ready to send a file to them. So Wi-Fi printing and remote sending is like, a necessity for me at this point. But something that I did notice is that when this machine is running, you can't actually send more print jobs to it. So this could be something that is like a standard feature in the Chi2 Box Connect or whatever it's called. And I've just never noticed until now, but it is a pretty common thing across most FDM printers that even when they are running a print job on them, you can still remotely send other print jobs to them. So it was a bit of a bummer that I had all of these print files that I was working on to send to the machine to like get it ready to go to be the next print job and I couldn't send them immediately until the print job was finished. So if it is a possibility that that can be updated to allow remote sending of more print jobs even when the machine is running, then that would be great. Obviously something that's not the end of the world, but something that I did notice and just wanted to mention. Technically the single largest thing that I printed on this machine was the Wiccan crown and also one that is already painted as you can see. This is a full-size prop crown piece. It's actually Actually, technically a little too big for me. I just printed it at 100% though. And even though it is quite a thin, delicate prop, it did take up quite a lot of build volume to get it printing since it is already in that formed headband shape. But yeah, it is a really cool detailed piece. But I'm going to take off now. <laughs> Overall, I think the Saturn IV Ultra 16K is honestly a near perfect resin 3D printer. It has so many great features on it that make it so easy to use that whether you are somebody that is looking at this machine being their first resin printer or are somebody with experience but are looking to upgrade, I think you will appreciate all of these ease of use features. Print quality is phenomenal and thanks to its larger build volume, you have an even larger range of types of projects you can use this machine for. Overall, I think this is an excellent resin printer that is going to be a great option for a ton of people, but especially those that want a really great all around versatile machine. One that is capable of producing larger projects while not sacrificing any of that resolution for when you want to print something smaller. If you want to find out even more information about the Saturn IV Ultra 16K, there will be links in the description box. But that is everything, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.